So usually, like I will always say, solving problems in math helps you know the technique and approach to follow for every kind of question that you see. Especially if you're writing an exam, you don't need to waste time. You don't need to beat around the bush. You need to know, you know, what approach to take. And that's why exercises are your friends. All right. So what do we do here? We should know that when we have an equation like this, there is the tendency of getting into a quadratic equation, all right? And how is that? So first of all, I will try to interpret the equation, you know, by the rules of indices. So one of the rules uh, tells us that if I have a raised to the power of x multiplied by a raised to the power of y, that it is the same thing as a raised to the power of x plus y. That is to say, I can write this in the other direction. So if I have a raised to the power of x plus y, it is the same as a raised to the power of x times a raised to the power of y. So that's exactly what we are going to be applying here and here, right? So this is going to give us 3 into uh, 2 raised to the power of 2x times 2 raised to the power of 3, okay, minus, I'm going to do the same thing here now. This will now be 2 raised to the power of x times 2 raised to the power of 3. And, okay, so now having applied that through, what's the next thing we can do here? Um, so, first of all, we'll now try to simplify out what we have here. So, we know that 2 raised to the power of 3 is 8. So, 8 times 3 is going to give us 24. And that is... Uh, now, if you watch here, you will see that this one is 2 raised to the power of x. Anyway, let's bring it down. So this will give us 2 raised to the power of x, uh, 2x minus, now this 8 times this 5 will give us 40 times 2 raised to the power of x. Okay. So you see, you will just be following the steps, uh, the rules step after step. And in the end, you get your solution. Right. So what can we do next? So you can see we have a, a particular factor here, between here and here, 2 raised to the power of x, and there is 2 raised to the power of x here. So if you watch then this is 2 raised to the power of 2x, it can actually be written as 2 raised to the power of x or raised to the power of 2, okay? Of course, you know there's a rule that allows us, when we open this bracket, this power will multiply this power, and that will give us back this. So now see what we are going to do now. We will say let our 2 raised to the power of x be equal to any variable of our choice. We can say p, all right? So if it becomes p, that means this one now is going to be p raised to the power of 2. And then this one will be p. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. So this is going to now give me 24 times p raised to the power of 2. That's for this guy minus 40p minus 156 equal to zero. Okay, so um, I think one of my students on the channel sent me a, a, a screenshot of uh, the solution he has. Now we must, you know, like the video I did yesterday on um, errors or mistakes we make in math. So we must be careful to ensure that we don't make mistakes. I saw him writing something like this. This as 2 raised to the power of x plus 3. It was clearly written that this is actually together with this. So the, if you watch that video where this exercise is, that is the video on exponential uh, equations on this channel too. So you see that this was actually up here. All right. So it's what this way. And then again, I think in another, this I also saw something like this. So you must ensure to write it clearly so that it will evidently be seen as a power. Not writing it in such a way that you don't know whether it's multiplication or an index. So please, it's important. 
you can clearly see that this thing now is showing that x plus 3 are both powers of 2. So even though there should be a bracket there, but with or without that, because it is raised up, you already know that both of them are exponents of the 2. Okay, so now let's go ahead. So having formed our uh, this, uh, quadratic equation, the next thing is to solve. Remember, we are looking for the value of x and not b. So by the time we get our b, we will substitute it back here. So quickly, let me put things this way. So let's try to solve this. Meanwhile, we'll try to check mm -hmm. if there is uh, a common factor, something that can divide through. And if you check, 2 can go. I think 4 can also go. Beyond 4, there's no other thing. Um, 6 cannot go. And 8 can go. So 4 can go. 4 goes into 24. We'll give us 6p squared. 4 into 40 is 10p. And 4 into this will give us 39. Confirm all of this. 4 into 0 is 0. All right. So I think this is okay. Now, we try to check, can we factor this quadratic equation? I am not sure. Now, I'm going to allow you to see a very quick way to know if factorization will work so that you don't waste your time trying it. Of course, let's check. Let's be sure. How do you check that? All you need to do is to check the value of the discriminant of the equation. What is discriminant? We call it D is equal to that part in the formula method where you have b squared minus 4ac. Okay, sorry, the, this one inside actually is a discriminant. So the b squared minus 4ac, that's your discriminant. So you check the square root of the discriminant and see what it will give you. If it gives you a whole number, then factorization will work. If it doesn't give you a whole number, there's no point trying factorization. Factorization won't work. That's a perfect square root. If it doesn't give you that, then it won't work. Okay, so quickly, let's do that. If we put our b is minus 10, so if we put minus 10 squared, that is 100, minus our 4 times our a is 6 times our c is minus 39. Okay, so by the time you multiply through this, and add everything, you are going to have the square root of 1036. And this is not a perfect uh, square. So if you take this square root, it's not going to be perfect. So that means factorization is not going to work here. So we can go ahead and use the formula method, which says that our b is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared, that same thing there, minus 4ac all over 2a okay so we we'll try to substitute into it so what's our b minus 10 so minus 10 times minus will be positive 10 so we now have plus or minus square root of that same thing we have there minus 10 all squared minus 4 times 6 times minus 39 okay so all over your 2 times your a, which is 6. So we will try to simplify what we have. I already said that that here is going to give us square root of uh, 1036. So try confirming that that is correct. And 2 times uh, 6 is 12. So we will now look for the square root of 1000 and 36. Quickly, let's look at that. All right, so the square root of that will give us 32.2 approximately all over 12. Therefore, our B is equal to 10 plus 32.2 over 12 or 10 minus 32.2 over 12. All right, now watch what we have. By the time you do this one, it's going to be positive. But this guy is going to be negative because 10 minus 32 is already minus 22.2. And so the value here is going to be negative. But recall that our P is equal to 2 raised to the power of X. And um, because your P is an index number, then it cannot be negative. Because there, there is no how you are going to express a negative number 
into an index from where the base is positive, okay, that means our P cannot be negative. So the P cannot take this value. So this is the only value our P can take. So we can come here and finish up. So we have that our P therefore is equal to 10 plus 32.2 is 42.2 over 12. And that is giving us 3.5 approximately. It's actually 5.2 approximately, but we can take that. And so with that value, we can now substitute here. So we'll now have that our 2 raised to the power of x is equal to 3.5. And so for us to get the value of x, we will take the log of both sides log of both sides and that's going to give us by the rule of logarithm the x will come down and so and so we will have x log of 2 is equal to log of 3.5 and so our x alone is equal to log of 3.5 all over log of 2 that's dividing both sides by log of 2 and of course it's a good place to stop. Okay, so, and even from here now, you could see why our P could not have taken this value. Because assuming our P was negative, if you write a negative value here, the logarithm of a negative value is undefined. And so, that's why your P cannot be negative. Right, so that's the solution to that exercise. And it's as simple as that. Alright, so that's what I said to show us in this video. Kindly subscribe and give a thumbs up to our videos. We will see you in our next lesson. Bye.